I declare bankruptcy! Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Josh and I'm a part-time reseller and you know, I'm hoping that, you know, videos like today give you a realistic look at what you can accomplish on your reselling business doing this part-time. And I say that because ever since I've started this YouTube channel, all I'm doing really is just working on my reselling business like I have always been. And the only difference now is there's a camera off to the side and I'm spending a little bit of extra time, you know, recording clips like the one you're seeing right now. And I'm not saying like I'm the ideal model of how you should be doing this part time because there are other part time resellers that are doing a lot more. They're working more efficiently. They're making a lot more money than I am. But I'm hoping that, you know, putting myself out there, putting my processes out there, you know, somebody in the reselling community is able to learn a thing or two, whether you're part-time or full-time, really. But hopefully, like I said, videos like today give you a realistic look at what you can accomplish working on a business two to three hours a day, about 12 to 15 hours a week. And obviously that's going to change depending on your schedule, your work schedule, work-life balance and whatnot. But I'm just sharing my reselling journey. Hopefully you guys learn a thing or two and yeah. These are the three items that I need to pack and ship out today. These are two small sales and then this one was not too bad. So I'll start with the two smalls. This one was a Rich Swan wrestling action figure. I picked this up. It was a bulk purchase through Offer Up. At this point, I've already made my money back, so I'm already into the green, so this is pretty much all just pure profit now. This did have a flaw, so you can see this little wing off to the side of his hip. That piece right there broke off on this side. I did disclose that. It did hurt the value, but I was still able to sell this $8.50, and the buyer paid shipping. The next small item is this Star Wars... R3 M2 Lego set. I picked this up. This was another bulk purchase that I picked up last summer and at this point I've already made my money back on that lot as well. So this is all pure profit. This sold for $5.94 and the buyer paid shipping on that. And this, if you've been following my channel, you know that I'm constantly selling expired film. So this is the last of this particular model. I sold this, I took a best offer on this for $48 and the buyer paid shipping. So this is a pack of five and it's expired film. So you can see here, this expired in 2005. So I got $48 for this and the buyer paid shipping. So packing my items is gonna be pretty simple today. I'm gonna use bubble mailers for all of these items. This first one, this is actually a bubble mailer I got back from a return. So you can see there's already a label on it so I'm just gonna print out a new label and slap it on top of this and cover it up and the thing I like about these eBay bubble mailers you can actually reuse them so this was the little sticky line I used initially you can actually tear it off right here and there's another sticky line right here that you can peel off and use so you can reuse this bubble mailer so I'm gonna do that I also have bubble wrap that I can reuse from that return so that's gonna be easy this is another easy one I'm just gonna wrap this once in bubble wrap it's probably not necessary but you know it's all about buyer perception so you know the buyer is going to receive this and he's going to feel better with a layer of bubble wrap on it and this one is going to go in a bubble mailer as well and just to protect the film here i'm going to do a little cardboard wrap which i'll show you but it'll be real simple i'm just going to take these two pieces of you know, just little cardboard pieces I had laying around and tape it down and then throw it in the bubble mailer. Okay, so I'm going to take this little resizing tool and measure out where I want the cardboard pieces to fold. And I'm just going to score those areas. I'm essentially creating like a ghetto little box with these like little pieces of cardboard that I have lying around. So you can see it's scored right here, here, here. So it's just gonna fit nicely. It's gonna fold there, fold down here, fold here. And I'll throw this on over here. So now I have just a layer of protection with cardboard. So all I have to do is tape down the edges here to secure it. I'm gonna have a nice protective layer of cardboard. 
and then I can throw that into a bubble mailer. Alright, so is it the prettiest thing? No, but will it keep the item safe? Yup. Throw that in the bubble mailer, and that item will be good to go. The thing I love about shipping out small items is that I can just use this USPS drop box right here. Throw it in. Yeah, but days like today where it's just a bunch of small packages, it's super convenient. So right behind me is actually all the mailboxes for my apartment complex. So it's like a 30 second drive. So I can go come here and get everything done in like less than five minutes. So definitely super convenient. And you know, the post office is pretty consistent. So like by the end of the day or early next morning, like the shipping is gonna be, like the tracking is gonna be all uploaded onto my eBay account. So definitely something convenient about, you know, having days like today where everything is just small packages. All right, so I'm about to head to one of my favorite spots to source during the week. Um, I'll show you guys why when I get there, but I usually come home and change. I typically don't like walking around in public in my uniform. I just feel like it draws unnecessary attention, especially after work hours. So I'll see you over there. This is actually one of my favorite spots to hit. Let me flip the camera and show you guys why. So you guys can see there's a TJ Maxx and a Goodwill right next to each other. And you know that just saves me time because I can hit two places at once. So. I'm gonna go in real quick and see what I can find. All right, so we're doing a voiceover today. So here I am walking to Goodwill, just walking. Let's go, hurry up, Josh. But the first place I really go to is the glass case up front. And I know like Goodwill employees pick through the good stuff and most of the stuff is usually overpriced, but once in a while you find something good at a decent price where you can make money. The first place I really go to you know, look for things to resell is this shoe section. And you know, I just love selling shoes. They're easy to list, easy to ship. And you know, I love athletic shoes. What I'm gonna check here are boots, I believe. Yep. So I always check the boots. You know, a good pair of hiking boots always sell for a good price. So just look up the brand, and then if there's a number on the inside tag, you know, add that to the brand and look it up. But athletic shoes, running shoes, cycling shoes is really what I'm looking at. So here we have, you know, I think these are trail running shoes, but they're minimal, minimalistic shoes. So we have New Balance Minimus here. And I ended up picking that up, spoiler. I ended up picking these up too, another spoiler. But these are cycling shoes, so you can see Pearl Uzuma. They were a little bit beat up, but I think if I just wipe it down, they'll still sell for like 30, 40 bucks. So definitely worth picking up there. After the shoes, I go to the electronics section. I don't know what it was today, but everything was super overpriced today. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, but man, like there was just slim picking in the electronics section today. Whoever was pricing was just, you know, I'm sure they were looking at eBay prices. So this one, you can see there, $30 for that. This next item, I was looking into it. This is a VCR and DVD combo player. And this one, they priced it at like $25. And honestly, if this model would have sold for like 80, 90, 100 plus dollars on eBay, I would have picked it up. But it was selling for like 35 bucks. So hard pass on that, $50 here, pass. What else we got? What else you got overpriced today, Goodwill? Let's see, how much is this? $40, yep, hard pass, nope. So after the electronics, I usually just do a loop around all the other aisles. This caught my attention. I was like, maybe there are games in here, maybe a console, controllers maybe, but no, it was just accessories for Wii Sports, so pass on that. I look at these gloves, they were youth gloves, and they would have sold for like $12, $15, so nothing to be made here, no money here. Let's go, let's move along, Josh. There's no money here. And the last place I usually go is clothing. So I usually check the hats first and then go to the racks and flip through all the hangers. I'm not going to show you clips of me flipping through hangers, but the hats, you know, I sometimes find cool things. This Budweiser hat caught my attention. You know, beer definitely sells, you know, especially if it's branded beer like that. Uh, unfortunately, this one, I found similar hats. They're only selling for like 10, 12 bucks. I think if it had a mesh backing, I would have definitely been able to pull in like $25 maybe, but yeah, I ended up passing on that Budweiser hat. I looked through all the other hats and, you know, 
there's just a pile of stuff here, so I have to dig, and unfortunately couldn't find anything good today, but yeah, you guys can just watch me dig through all these hats. Alright. And if I really have time, I check out the media. A lot of times there's not a lot to be found here. I kind of got excited about NCAA Football 11. Unfortunately, the one that's really good and worth picking up is NCAA Football 14, so I put that away. And let's see, what else do I find that might be attractive? Oh yeah, so these Harry Potter audiobooks, that one was new sealed, so I thought there was potential here. They priced it at $10, and I looked it up and they were only selling for like 15 bucks maybe on eBay. So I passed on that unfortunately, I saw Battlestar Galactica, this was sealed as well, so... You know, I know that's a pretty big show, so I looked it up. This one was priced at $8, so just, everything's just overpriced today, so nothing really to be found here, unfortunately. Okay, and look how convenient this is. I just walk next door to TJ Maxx, and I always hit the clearance rack first, and obviously we're going to speed this up. Uh, usually, I just dig through, and whatever catches my eye, I pull off to the side, so I'm going to go back for that Polaroid t-shirt. I think there's a Nintendo shirt that catches my eye too. Yeah, there's a Nintendo button down. I thought it was pretty cool, so I'm just gonna keep flipping through. But yeah, I just take what catches my eye and things that I think are profitable and just push them off to the side and then I'll go back and look them up. Unfortunately, today there wasn't anything. I mean, the, the margins just weren't there to make enough money. But the good thing with places like this is that They'll continue to mark down their prices until they eventually sell, so it's definitely worth you know continuing to go back and checking that clearance rack. And obviously here you see me going through shoes. I've had the most success with shoes and clearance clothing at places like Marshalls and TJ Maxx. I wanted to show you guys this. This was marked down all the way to one dollar. These are Adidas football cleats, I believe. Yeah, I think they're football cleats, but if you look at the size, the size is 18. It's a US 18, so. I don't know if anyone buys US 18 shoes. I found one sold comp and it sold for $5 plus shipping, so I ended up passing on those size 18 $1 Adidas cleats. Okay, so back home now, and I need to dedicate some time to cleaning up these shoes and getting them ready to photograph and list. And honestly, like, if the shoes aren't in pretty good condition, like, I won't pick them up. I want to put as little effort into cleaning them and getting them ready for photography as possible. So like these New Balance minimis, minimalistic shoes, really all I do is I have these unscented baby wipes. If a shoe is dirty to the point where I have to do more than just wipe it down with baby wipes just to get a little bit of dirt and grime off, like I typically won't pick them up. I pick these up, these Skecher Shape Ups. A little less than a week ago and honestly like I might not even need to wipe them down with baby wipes but condition of shoes is a very important factor for me when I'm deciding whether or not I want to pick them up I mean everything here the cycling shoes and the running shoes I picked up you know there's definitely dirt on them but nothing that baby wipes can't fix another thing I do um, so obviously like running shoes, especially used running shoes, they're, they're gonna have a little stank to them because people have obviously run in them before, they've worked out in them, so there usually is a little bit of a smell. So what I do for that, I have these dryer sheets here that I just have lying around the house from doing laundry of course, but you know, if I just stick one of these into the shoe, for a few days, it does a pretty good job on getting rid of the smell, and I've sold a pretty good number of used shoes, a lot of running shoes, and I've stuck dryer sheets in all of them, and I've never had any issues or complaints with buyers. So really, to break it down simply, the two things I do when buying and selling used shoes, especially running shoes or workout shoes, you know, I make sure that they're clean enough. You know, there can be a little bit of dirt, but make sure that they're clean enough that all I need to do is wipe it down with baby wipes. And the second thing I do is I take those dryer sheets and I put them into the shoe just to get rid of any smell from, you know, previous sweat or whoever has been wearing it before. But just to get rid of the smell, the dryer sheets do wonders. Alright, so I'm going to cut the video off here. If you've made it this far, I appreciate it. I really do appreciate everyone who's watching. If you're not subscribed, you know, consider subscribing to follow me on my reselling journey. If you already are, you know, welcome back to my channel and 
you know, leave a comment down below, say hi, you know, I love interacting with everyone in the reselling community. So definitely leave a comment below, say hi, leave feedback, whatever you want to say, I'll make sure to get back to you. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and until next time, bye.